Okay, hi everyone. Um, so this is this is going to be um, there is overlap, obviously. This is again um, online, but what, what I'm going to try to do is actually um, talk to um, developers, engineers, people who are interested in in, in more uh, in-depth detail. Obviously, we don't have um, enough time to go into all the um, the interesting um, bits, but um, hopefully, I'm going to give you a, a taste of um, how things work uh, in the background. Um, and what interesting technologies there are, and, and feel free to later, you know, come uh, and talk with all the collaborators who work on online. So, um, this is this is essentially a, a, um, a quick snapshot of um, you know the different um, applications that we have, and uh, Olivier just um, demonstrated um, some of them, um, which which is handy. A quick overview of uh, what I'm going to be talking about. So. Um, briefly, um, you know, give give a background of why online is really important. Then we dive into the architecture, um, and we wrap up with um, a, a quick um, note on you know how, how we tackle scalability and, and performance and, and all all those nice things. Um, so, the the idea of, of moving online should be fairly um, accessible and obvious to everyone, but. Um, it, it might not be as um, easily uh, obvious that it actually, with, with all the benefits of being able to access your documents and edit them and, and, and all that, you also have a lot of challenges. You have a lot of um, perform performance-related issues that you want to solve for your um, customers because everybody's used on having all these features on the desktop, and the desktop is obviously snappy and, and local. Um, you come to expect the same thing on the web. And this is the main challenge that, that we need to solve so that we have something, a product that's actually usable um, and is at least as good as, as desktop. But then we add um, you know, the, the, the extra features, the, 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 you know, the cherry on the cake, if you like, um, of allowing them to do uh, things that they can't do with the, with the desktop, like having um, versioning, having um, collaborative um, editing where they can edit the same document with, with their um, colleagues and friends at the same time um, and, and extend from there to even you know, more um, um, rich um, features. So this is um, uh, 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 an engineer's view of the, um, the architecture. You can see it's a, it's a very accurate diagram. Um, millimeter precision here. Um, let me spend a couple of minutes on this because I think it's important to visualize what is, how, how does the system break down really. Um, what, what you see here is uh, on the one hand you have a client connecting to um, a server, the, 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 the web um, services daemon, the WSD, the blue, and um, these, are, these are just regular um, HTTPS connections, so you have, you have SSL, you have certificates, you have all the nice security, um, you know, secu security um, uh, that, that that brings you. Um, but beyond that, what you have is a, is a server that's actually um, um, self-contained. Um, it does serve um, all the, the files that we need on, on the web, we, um, you know, all the JavaScripts, all the HTMLs that we, that we generate. So it is self-contained. Um, we have full control over what we um, uh, what the clients get from us and the bits that we exchange with them. Uh, we don't have extra dependencies that, that we need to worry about you know, um, in terms of having another um, ser server. Um, beyond that, um, you really have this, this green process here that is, that is a helper for, for making sure that we can very quickly and efficiently uh, fork the actual instances um, of the, the, um, the, the kit that does host the document and does all the magic that, that you see in online. So, so that fork it is, is the, the magic that does that, and essentially it is just forking itself whenever we ask it to do, and it is, beyond that it is just, um, it does, does nothing else, so it, it's a very lightweight approach. Once we spawn um, um, the kit instance, what it does, it, it, it actually loads um, the core libraries, um, it connects back to the WSD, so you get a, a dedicated um, WebSocket, and from there on it has a dedicated channel to talk with, with um, WSD, and, and WSD 
will be able to utilize its resources the next time a client comes along. So this is, you can see from, from my verbiage that this is, this is actually happening in advance in many cases um, so that we will be prepared. So there is always an extra in, you know, instances that are running um, before clients you know, connect to you. And once we've uh, exhausted our um, instances, then uh, Forkit is gonna, is gonna um, rev up and spawn some more to match your, your uh, configuration number. So once we get a client you know, connection, um, um, things, things start getting interesting and I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to that. So um, briefly, to, uh, mostly um, I've mentioned these stuff, but um, briefly what is happening is that um, obviously internally you have the, the core and that, that is exposed to us um, using the, the um, LO kit API that Miklos yesterday um, talked about. Um, and uh, every document has its own dedicated process, which incidentally happens to um, be jailed. So um, there is a, um, a CH root process going on that jails that, that process into, um, you know, essentially uh, its own world. So it can't um, see the actual file system. It can't do um, anything uh, privileged. And that is dedicated to a single document. So when you are sharing that document and working with somebody else on that document, you have implicitly given them access to the document and everything that, that you know, the document contains or, or represents. So that is fine. So they, are, they share that process with you. Um, and th between you, there, is, there, there are no firewalls, as to speak. But for everybody else working on other documents, you, you are jailed. And, and you um, won't be able to break out uh, if we've done our um, job right. Um, we, we do have um, designed collaborative editing into this, and, and this is the, um, um, the latest feature that we've, we've been working on very hard the past um, several months. And we integrate um, with uh, major um, document storage and um, um, uh, networking uh, platforms. Currently, we have uh, own cloud, next cloud integration working, and um, there's, there's more to come. On the web, the, the technology that we're using is, is fairly um, um, standard in terms of, you know, you have all your JavaScript that, that's doing all the heavy lifting for you. Um, you have a, a single, essentially, um, um, uh, platform that's, that's uh, com it's essentially portable and, and compatible with a large number of browser, browsers. Um, and that is powered by a, a mapping um, library uh, called Leaflet which gives us the ability to use it for all these tiles, which are very similar to um, you know, when, when, you're, when you're browsing or navigating a, a map. Um, we're going we're gonna to see a little bit about that as well. And obviously, when we do the integration with the um, document um, hosting platforms, we, we need to um, uh, have a way to interface with that so that you have, you'd have your, your UI elements. You click on the document, and internally, it does all the magic um, that lets you <coughs> load the document from them. Um, and we currently support the WAPI um, standard, for example, um, that gives you the ability to um, access any document with a, with a token that can expire, and the token is, um, can be authenticated with OAuth or whatever um, that platform supports. Um, and all this is happening um, pretty much in a standard uh, and abstract way, so it, it's, not, um, it, it's not too... Um, complex to add new platforms. Um, so the tile rendering is, is, is really as simple as, as you can see. This is one tile, and one can visualize that there is one on its left and one on its right and, and below it as well. So the browser is really seeing um, an array or a matrix of uh, PNGs right next to each other. And then the JavaScript is doing all the magic of interacting with it. So when you click somewhere, um, you, will, you will see that um, um, uh, the, the browser is respon responsive and there's a, there's a cursor, um, but all that is happening thanks to the, the JavaScript and, and, and that part is, of the cursor is rendered uh, in the browser, but in reality your, your uh, actual document is rendered as, as an image to you. Um, the, the tile rendering itself is um, actually quite um, um, an important part of, of all this. As you can imagine, it affects your performance because if you're typing something, we need to render um, that part of the document that just got modified. And 
prepare a PNG and push it as fast as we can to the browser, and the browser needs to essentially flip the, the old one with, you know, and the new one, so that you would immediately see your character pop up, and, and that's when you know, um, you know you, you've, you've typed something in the document. And to do that, we, we, we have um, 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 a, a lot of um, um, performance essentially sensitive um, d design elements. Some of these are um, that we uh, cache all the tiles, make sure that we render them once until they are invalidated. So once you've rendered the document, if, not, if you're doing nothing, other people who join in can see the document pretty much immediately because all the images are just downloaded essentially. It's like a visiting website. Um, so you see the document just, just pop, out, pop right at you. Um, uh, incidentally, if multiple clients are asking for the same tile at the same time and, the, and, it, and it's not rendered yet, we're smart enough to know that and, and we know, okay, this, this tile is already being rendered and we keep track of who's asking for it. So once it's rendered, we send it back to all of them. We broadcast to all of them at the same time. And we also have the ability to combine these tiles into, into larger blocks. So we render a much larger block and then we split it up into tiles and, and we cache them and we, 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 again, we send them to the, um, to the client. And obviously, the client might, might ask a big chunk of uh, tiles, but then they change their mind because you know, the user just scrolled away from that page and now they're gonna ask for another bunch of tiles. So th what they do is they say, just cancel all the previous ones, give me these new ones. So internally, we know not to send them um, or even render if, the, if these tiles weren't ready um, to cancel all, all that um, and, and, and not worry about it and just start working on, on the latest stuff. Um, this is um, the second and last, I think, um, um, diagram that I have um, today. V very light on diagrams, um, um, this talk. This is what actually happens when you're, when you're loading a new document. Again, um, very quickly for, for those um, um, who are interested in, in the technical details, what is happening is a client connects to the WSD and says, you know, um, hello there. Um, just, just the fact that you've connected to us is, is, is reason enough that we need to make sure that we have a, um, a kit process running. And if we don't have that, we, we tell the, the four kit um, process to spawn one. And, create a session for us. And that create session is what um, tells the, the, the kit instance to connect back to the uh, WSD and to start um, uh, the process of, of uh, preparing to load the document. The client, the connection itself, when it says, you know, hi there, that must include some sort of a valid URL to a document. So we need to have a, an idea of what you're trying to do here because we do checks and we do, um, there is a security layer. We don't let you just reference anything. So for example, referencing local files and things like that would be blocked and, and, um, and sanitized. Um, once the, the kit is connected to WSD, then there is this handshake that goes on where we need to match this kit instant to this particular document and that document to all these clients, potentially. We start with one and then we add more. So there, there is this, this um, um, uh, structure that we need to maintain across these uh, processes and, and connections. Um, and once we've established this connection, then um, the client is free to actually send the load document request, which can have options. For example, you, you can pass it all the um, the, the, the nice options that you can actually ha you have on the desktop, um, um, like for example, to, to hide the, the white space between the, the you know the pages, um, uh, and you know you, you can customize essentially some of the things. And once you've done that, you you, you load the, we load the document, and from there on it's it's all um, communication that goes back and forth between the kit WSD and WSD forwards it to the correct clients. Um, the, the protocol itself is um, 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 between the client and the server and internally and back is pr pretty much um, a minimalist uh, protocol. Um, we, most of, the, most of the, the, the commands that we have and responses are just a single line of text, um, nothing fancy. We have a, a command name uh, that potentially can have multiple arguments. Um, you have a simple um, uh, structure where you have uh, arguments that are essentially just a space-separated um, list of arguments that we expect to be 
um, structured in a specific way. So it's a very um, strict formatting. And then you have a flexible, um, extendable format, which is a JSON. And the JSON is essentially um, uh, only allowed for certain um, commands and responses. So uh, again, we, there is there's tight control on, on what the protocol um, allows, um, but it is flexible enough that if you say, okay, the JSON is allowed here, then you can have um, um, a, a very dynamic structure um, provided you know, the client or, or whoever it is receiving it knows what to do with it. Um, tiles are the exception to all this because tiles are by nature binary and, and that's the only case where we have a, a, um, a single line uh, response, which is a header if you like, and then uh, beyond that the rest is essentially the PNG uh, binary um, and that is the only exception um, to, to the above. The communication is happening between the, the client um, and it ultimately has to reach the, uh, the, the, the kit instance, but then the core uh, um, is reacting to all these events that are happening by issuing its own events, by saying this, this happened, this changed. Um, you know, um, when, you, when you add that page break or, or, or a new line and there's a new page added to your document, your document size has changed. So all these the information needs to be sent back and that is, um, that is happening in essentially the same way that, that the commands are happening. I'm going to um, talk briefly um, about the, the events um, here. Um, the, the way we, we've, we integrate with, um, with the core is by this API interface. And the API essentially um, has um, uh, two parts, if you like. One is, is the, 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 the commands that you want to invoke on, on your document, and the other one is um, the events that you want to receive back, and those events are coming by registering callbacks. And we have two callbacks. One is for um, global events that happen on, on the document level. Um, that includes um, the status uh, you know, indicator update and uh, password, if there's a password on the document or not. These are very um, common things. But then you have um, uh, view callbacks, and these are uh, essentially they're per client. So every, every client that connects, <clears throat> when we create the session for that client, we have, we have a, a mapping between the client. Um, the client has a, a unique session ID, and we know that session ID belongs to this document, and ultimately that um, session ID is, has its own um, callback that's registered with core. So when core um, issues events that th that particular client needs to receive, um, that callback is invoked. From there, we, we figure out which session it belongs to, and the forwarding process back to the client is, is done uh, uniquely for every client connection. So some things are broadcast to everybody, some things are dedicated to a specific client. Um, currently, uh, Core is doing the broadcasting, and online um, doesn't really need to care about that just yet. Um, the to make things even more efficient, if you, if, for those who know the internals of, um, of, of uh, core, the code, um, you, 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 you will know that, that there are many events that are fired um, at different points in time, and some of them are redundant, some of them you know, undo the others because they, they supersede them. And we've noticed that this could be a really big problem. For example, if you make a modification, you might get multiple invalidations, so multiple redraws on the desktop. It takes you know, uh, microseconds to render a, a small you know, piece of uh, your, your device. But if you're going to invalidate that same tile or multiple tiles if you're, if you're at the edge of one, um, then you're going to render multiple tiles, you're going to make the clients do more work, and there's a lot of traffic going on, and you, you can't sustain that. So what, what we did is, in, in core, we've added um, a, a queue, an event handling queue, that is flushed on idle. Um, and in, on top of that, we um, make sure that, that we, um, we can invalidate, oh, sorry, we can actually compress and deduplicate any um, redundant um, events so that we minimize them to the, to the bare minimum. Um, um, quickly, what, what, what happens when, when, when somebody makes a change is the user input is processed by the um, JavaScript that then it gets forwarded to the WSD. The WSD is forwarding it yet again to the kit. The kit invokes the API on, on core. 
core is doing its magic, at this point the client doesn't need to do anything. Um, it doesn't know what's going to happen next, and then core is going to issue an event if there is a modification. That event is, is going to um, go back through the callback, um, through WSD, and forward it to the client. The client is going to figure that, okay, there is an invalidation, let's say, as a re response to the uh, previous event that it issued, and it, it requests tiles, and now the tiles will, be, will get processed separately. So th there is a bit of back and forth, because this, it, it is essentially the same thing that happens on desktop is happening now across processes and across um, connections and, and um, geographic domains, really. Um, threading is, um, um, is, is, is actually very critical as well because we cannot afford to have um, many threads per connection, so we, ha we have to work with the bare minimum. Um, internally, the core instance <coughs> is um, just, there is a single instance and we need to synchronize all our operations around it. So with multiple views, you need to take a lock and set the views to tell which client is really doing this modification and then you jump to, um, to, to calling the API functions you need and then you release the lock and, and everybody is happy. So you, you kind of minimize things. Um, finally, um, uh, scalability. What we need is a way to measure things, and what, what we really need is to have a, a comparable benchmark. So we've, we've, we've come up with this um, stress um, testing uh, uh, tool, which actually does two things um, that um, have an overlapping um, uh, you know, purpose, if you will. One is to do a purely a benchmark. So we just run a bunch of invalidations and tile requests, and we see how fast is our um, server responding to this and how fast we can render tiles and how fast we can um, send them back. You have um, two numbers for, for the tiles. You have the rendering. If you see there is a sample here. So we have the, 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 the rendering power and the, um, the, the, the cache power. So the cache power is essentially these are cached tiles. So this is, this is how fast your round trip is to read a PNG off the disk, push it into um, the WebSocket back to the client. And this is on this particular um, machine, it was, it was this fast uh, in terms of megapixels per second. Um, and you also have the rendering power, which is you know, purely um, how, many, how many megapixels can you really render um, given your hardware and given your current um, code base. Um, but on top of that, you get also latency numbers for a complete round trip of a, uh, a, a command that you've issued, like an input, and the response that you get back. Um, um, uh, uh, parallel to this, this, this particular tool can do something um, uh, else that's really interesting, which is to replay any session. So by enabling a flag in the, in the config and giving a path to a file, we can record all the commands that we've received from all the clients for a given server instance, so it's, a, it's an instance wide, and that can be replayed, and you can replay essentially without timing, so you can flood essentially um, a recorded session of multiple hours immediately on the server and see how it's gonna respond. Um, or you can replay it with the same timing as it, as, the, as it happened, including opening documents, closing documents, new views coming in and leaving, and so on. Um, so with that, I, I, I wanna um, quickly um, try to um, showcase what, 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 I'm, what I'm doing here. So um, this is a, this is a, a writer document that I'm, that I'm going to be editing, and, and you can see right now it's not me, um, because my, my cursor is actually here, and this is me typing, okay? And um, you, you will see that if, if I make a selection here, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to have my own cursor, my own uh, world, and, and um, Pranav actually, who's sitting right there, is doing the uh, typing for the other um, um, session. And you can see his selection, I can see, and I can see his, his login. Here, his, his login is, um, um, he's undercover at the moment, so he's going by uh, Bugzilla. Um, and he will see my selection with my name, um, and we know who's who, and he will see a different color for me, for my selection, my cursor. And everybody gets their own unique color. Um, so you can recognize people, and um, you, you can exactly tell who's doing what. Um, and we can edit this document in parallel. Um, with that, um, thank you and questions.